Welcome to Cobra Kai, a dojo in which I will strike first, strike hard, and with absolutely no mercy when it comes to my Season 3 predictions. I've been following the development and plot clues from Season 3 pretty closely, as I love the Karate Kid movies. I grew up with the Karate Kid. Part 2 is one of the first films I ever saw in theaters, and we all know how special that is. And I have fallen completely in love with the Cobra Kai series. I dare say it's one of the best movie to television adaptations ever. From using the original cast, to giving us interesting new characters, to being true to the spirit of the films, and even giving us insights into the universe that we never thought about. Like how similar Daniel and Johnny really are at heart. And I have massive respect for channels like Cobra Kai Theory and Cobra Kai Kid. But with all the speculation about Season 3 and how they're going to continue, there's one Season 3 plot prediction which to me is the most logical that nobody's thought of yet. They've touched on a couple of these things, and if they did hit it, sorry, I, I missed that video, guys. But let's get into what I think will happen in Season 3 of Cobra Kai. When we left off in Season 2, everything was in shambles. It was a very dark ending, similar to films like The Empire Strikes Back, where the bad guys had seemingly won. Sam LaRusso is in the hospital. Daniel's wife has absolutely put her foot down. No more karate. And Johnny, having lost his dojo, the woman he was interested in, and having his most loyal student paralyzed, seems to have given up. In fact, the last thing we see in Season 2 is Allie with an eye sending Johnny a Facebook friend request as he ditches his Cobra Kai challenger and walks away alone. Now it's at this point that we should remember Chekhov's gun which is a dramatic principle that states that every element in the story must be necessary and irrelevant elements should be removed. If there's a loaded gun in the room in a movie or story, it's going to be used. So we're going to use some relatively easily missed details from the series so far. But trust me guys, it's all relevant to a writer. So it's pretty obvious Allie's going to come back. Allie with an eye, as we've learned, is now a pediatric surgeon, so it doesn't take a real genius to figure out what her role is going to be. Possibly referring someone, or more than likely being the surgeon that will help heal Miguel and get him back on his feet. So what else do we know about Season 3? Daniel's going to Okinawa, probably to regain balance. But how, with his daughter recovering from her battle, and his wife refusing to let the family have anything else to do with karate? I highly doubt Daniel's wife will allow their daughter to accompany him. I think she's going to remain here in the U.S. and be integral to the story as it relates to the remaining Miyagi-Do students even continuing to train with them in secret to counter the Cobra Kais who, as we left them, are now training under the cruel tutelage of John Kreese. But back to Daniel going to Okinawa. How's he going to talk his wife into letting him take a karate sabbatical with his daughter severely injured from a dojo feud that Daniel has been fanning the flames of? Well, she's not. They're going to separate. I don't believe they're going to divorce. But think about it. In the episode entitled The Power of Love, Daniel has just gotten back on her good side after nearly a full season of terrible consequences due to this feud. His wife has repeatedly made no secret about the fact that she is sick of this karate thing and Daniel refusing to give up his role in it. It's become kind of a running theme for the show. From Johnny showing up at their house and them having to give him a car, to the very end where Sam is now in the hospital. So Daniel goes to Okinawa, recently separated from his wife, possibly being told he can't even see his kids right now. He's broken. Robbie his favorite student, has paralyzed another kid, so he's failed as a teacher. From his perspective, he's failed as a husband, and maybe most important of all to him, he's failed the spirit of Mr. Miyagi and the karate and philosophy that has been his entire foundation for his life. So he takes off for the last place he thinks he can find balance. The furthest place he's ever been from all the things we just mentioned. Okinawa. Now just to get it out of the way, the actor who played Sato has passed away unfortunately, and I truly don't think they're gonna give that role to another person. So that leaves many people to logically conclude that Chosen will be involved. And I agree, there's really no way to avoid that. Will Chosen be friend or foe remains to be seen, but my money's on foe. It might even mirror Miyagi and Sato's feud and eventual into that feud in part two. After all, Chosen was trained by Sato and Miyagi-Do. If there is anyone who can give Daniel a lesson or some new wisdom from the Miyagi school, it's going to be Chosen. There's simply no one else left to do it. So let's put it to bed if Chosen is coming back or not, and if this holds water using some good old-fashioned internet autism. The actor who played Chosen is Yuji Okamoto, and Yuji never stops working. He has a film or a project that he's involved in that has come out every year since Karate Kid Part 2. 
In 2019, he completed filming on his latest film, Paper Tiger, which as of March 2020, according to IMDb, was in post-production. And outside of possibly some voice work, his work is done. And strangely, nothing after that. If we're to judge from his work history, Yuji stays busy and is in demand. So he was working on something after that. And as far as interviews and articles go, he's been strangely pretty silent. Yuji is coming back. The timing, the amazing work ethic, and the big gap in his filmography have convinced me of that. So Chosen's in. But there's one more huge player that nobody ever mentions in their Cobra Kai predictions for season three. Kumiko, played by Tamlin Tomita, who was actually born in Okinawa. So she's certainly familiar and able to travel. Now, if we look at her IMDb, she is as busy, if not busier than Yuji all the way through 2020. Picard filmed in 2018 through mid-2019, and she did some voice work for an episode of DuckTales and is just finishing up on a film called I Will Make You Mine, which completed in 2019 and was released in early 2020. This shows me she was also likely free and available in December 2019 when they traveled to shoot on location in Okinawa. And like Yuji, this is the only block of time she hasn't been working. It's just too perfect. I believe they're both in. But back to the actual prediction. Kumiko was Daniel's love interest in Okinawa in part two that I dare say he was just as much in love with as Ali with an eye, if not more. And unlike Ali, she loved Daniel. The tea ceremony, Daniel having a part in saving her village and her life, she witnessed Daniel perform real selfless heroics for her and her loved ones. And in part three, we learned that Kumiko and him never really broke up she was going to come to America, but she ended up getting a shot at her dream as a dancer and going to Tokyo instead with Daniel's blessing. And, and when is Kamiko arriving? Uh, she's, um, she's not. She, uh, got this great job with a dance company in Tokyo, and uh, I guess she just couldn't say no, so. It wasn't an ugly ordeal as much as just a sad parting of paths in life. And I dare say, if she had moved to the U.S., her and Daniel would still be married to this day. I believe we will see Kumiko return to the Karate Kid universe when Daniel returns to Okinawa, possibly reigniting that flame. Now, do I believe they will end up together? Probably not. But with Daniel separated from his wife and his whole life in ruins, I cannot fathom them not trying to incorporate Kumiko in possibly some short-lived romance that Daniel comes to realize maybe wasn't meant to be as he continues to miss his wife and family. I also cannot see her forgiving Chosen for beating her up and holding a knife to her throat at the bone dance which gives credibility to the theory that there will have to be some manner of conflict and resolution between them both and Chosen. So where does that leave the rest of the cast? In America, Johnny decides he's not going to run away from Miguel like he did to Robbie, who's currently missing at the end of season two. Johnny, one way or another, is going to reconnect with Allie and tell her about Diaz's condition. Allie, who is a pediatric surgeon, will then make her entrance, possibly at Johnny's behest, and I believe it'll be Allie that tells Johnny that he can't give up on his dreams and let Crease win. I mean, I dated plenty of babes after I never really let my guard down with any of them, you know? Not like with Allie. She knows better than anyone what John Kreese did to Johnny Lawrence. If Johnny needed a shoulder to cry on due to Kreese's abuse or that of his stepfather previous to their senior year, it would have been Allie's. As for Kreese and the no mercy philosophy Cobra Kai school, writer Hayden Schlossberg gave us a huge clue on Twitter. Terry Silver is his favorite character. And frankly, in some ways, I totally agree. Terry Silver was an amazing villain. So over the top that he was ridiculous. When I'm finished with that kid, he'll be begging me to be his teacher. And you know what he's gonna learn from me? Pain in every part of his body and fear in every part of his mind. <laughs> and here's the kicker, he's gonna thank me for it. And in some ways comical, but also fearless and cunning and in great debt to John Kreese. We're even given a clue, I believe, in season two about his return. Making yourself right at home, huh? Buddy of mine took that photo. Yeah, it's nice. I got a class to run. I know it seems kind of small and innocuous, but what is the purpose of writing that line? Of course someone had to take the picture. That goes without saying, but John specifically says his buddy took that picture. Remember Chechov's gun? They would not have written that line without a purpose. We also get two more important clues that Terry Silver has not been forgotten by the writers. Once in season one, Mr. Lawrence, what is your relationship to this Terry Silver? Ma'am, I have no idea who that even is. I'm just a small business owner trying to make a living. And with this clue in season two. One of my war buddies, he, uh, 
He offered me a job. But I felt like it was a handout. Of course it would be Terry Silver that would offer Crease a job. Not only is he in a position to do so, but there's a good chance he blames himself for their failure in the final closing of Cobra Kai and putting John Kreese out of work. And we've seen how attached he was to Kreese. In fact, I've never seen John Kreese show as much respect to anyone as he does to Terry Silver. So Kreese turns him down for the job, possibly out of a deep inner shame for taking advantage of their friendship to carry out this revenge plan and failing. And this isn't surprising, as Kreese was ready to give him the keys and just walk in part three. So it's reasonable to assume that the first person John Kreese would call and say Cobra Kai is back and get financial backing for commercials, dojos, and everything else would be Terry Silver. Now with Daniel and Miyagi go out of the way, what's really to stop him? Terry Silver is going to go to work evening the odds with the LaRussos. Johnny's biggest disadvantage versus Daniel in their feud wasn't his fighting ability. It was that he was poor and Daniel is rich. Daniel repeatedly used his influence and wealth to try and crush Johnny's dream of creating a new, better Cobra Kai. And I dare say, Terry Silver was much more wealthy than Daniel becomes. Heck, Terry might even go after their home, their dealerships, make business moves to finish LaRusso off, who's currently in Okinawa, leaving his business in the hands of his wife who's not prepared to handle this enemy from the past who has already proven he doesn't mind using his time and wealth for the purpose of revenge. And if John Kreese is still salty about the past, you better believe Terry Silver would be. Kreese has lost before, but Terry Silver was 10 times as arrogant as John Kreese and he is not used to losing. He would never forget it. Only Daniel, who hopefully will find balance and possibly some new training in Okinawa, along with Johnny, who will find his balance by helping Miguel rehabilitate and making peace with not only his current love interest, Miss Diaz, as well as possibly letting go of his flame for his high school sweetheart, Ali with an eye. Together, we'll be able to rise to the challenge of the threat of what Terry, Silver, and Kreese are doing. Now, just like everyone else, I'll have to wait for season three to air to find out how correct this theory is. But all the pieces are there for both Shozen and Kumiko to return, as well as having some heavy clues suggesting Terry, Silver will be in as well. But what do you think? I would love to hear your Cobra Kai theories in the comments below.